Olijah is a side-scroller metroidvania where you play as Faraday, a man who is shipwrecked on a broken coast full of broken, lost men who live on the remains of their broken, lost ships and who sets out to find his way back home. In order to do so, Faraday gets a magical harpoon, meets a princess, and fights a mysterious evil demon monster that wants to stop you from returning to your home through the big portal that is at the heart of your entire quest. The storyline of the game is based around these small moments of dialogue, particularly with the boatman who acts as your guide through the world, and several other characters, as well as the general vibe or aesthetic of the world. The entire world is made up of a series of islands which act as a practical way of dividing the game up with levels, but it also provides a different setting and background for the decay that has enveloped the world. The Rottenwood clan has destroyed and murdered and left many men locked in cages to slowly starve. When they see you, they cry out and try to follow you, and mostly this leads to them dying in gruesome ways. You meet some other clans on the islands, and they are being attacked by this general darkness that has seemingly taken over everything. However, when you arrive with your magical harpoon, which you get relatively early on in the game, there's a mixed reaction. Obviously, people appreciate your help from defeating their enemies, and you even gain a cult following in Oak Tide as the game progresses, which acts as your home base and your place to level up. But other people are wary of your harpoon and the power that it seemingly has. It also seems like there is this darkness within the harpoon as well that makes it unclear who the savior truly is as the story progresses. While Yellow Cloak, the main bad guy, is clearly pretty evil, we do get an origin story for him later on in the game where you see that he was once a warrior who was being attacked and was forced to take up the mask that he wears that seemingly gives him his evil powers. His origin is not that different from Faraday and his harpoon but he stayed in the land and devolved into the monster that he became. There is no true indication of this, but I'm just reading into the origin scene that we see of Yellow Cloak, so, you know, that might be a little bit of my interpretation thrown in. There's also a flute player that you stumble upon on every single island. There's no explanation to this character, but it's clear that this is some metaphorical meaning to him, always being there at these various monuments, playing his flute, and offering some wisdom. And there's the boatman himself, who we don't get a ton of info on, but there's one moment where he has to fight off some rabid zombie type men, and he talks about how he never wished to pick up his sword again. Or there is Aldeja, the namesake of the game and the princess of the land. You rescue her from Yellow Cloak early in the game, but then you're kept away from her by her guard. You have some interest in her, and she has some interest in you, so you sneak around. Then her boat is attacked, and surprise, she is an insane warrior too. I guess everyone has to be a warrior to survive in this world because it's all pretty messed up. She ends up being the final key that you get in order to escape the world as well. There are more encounters in the game with Olijah that I did not get to see though because they are hidden somewhere in the game. I thought I was doing a pretty full exploration of the game but I guess I still missed like three encounters with her somehow. I think that, like many indie games, the developers were going for an aesthetic and vibes more than a clear storyline that can be like fully explained or solved. I always do appreciate that in games, especially if they nail what they're trying to achieve. And I think Olaja does a really good job of this with the music, the dialogue even if it is a little vague, and the scenery that you're always traveling through. I also think that the sound design is good as well to match the darkness of the world. And then that leads into the actual gameplay. The game is a mix of quick combat and puzzles where you have to use the harpoon and the teleportation that it offers. The combat offers multiple weapons to use, but the best one is the harpoon because you can jump from enemy to enemy with the teleportation to attack them quickly. When you get into a rhythm, the game can seem like chaos, but there is an incredible amount of fun within that chaos. This can be a little frustrating on some of the more difficult enemies, like the final boss, but for the most part it was fun to jump from enemy to enemy attacking them as quickly as possible. The puzzles are a little fun, they take advantage of the side-scroller aspects of the game where it gives you hints in the verticality of the game, only for you have to go to the next screen in order to understand and complete the puzzles. Very Metroid of it. It takes a little memory, but there was never anything that actually caused me that much trouble. I don't think that's because I'm like super smart or anything, it's just because of the simple nature of the puzzles. The game in general is just pretty easy. That is welcome. Since some indie games in this vein fall into the punish you with their difficulty category and attempt to capture that market of gamers that have become more vocal in recent years, and you know them, 
They are the Dark Souls get good crowd that's always so much fun to talk to about their video game preferences. The ones who despise difficulty sliders and who will repeatedly bang their heads against the wall to defeat a pain in the ass boss to show how clearly superior they are as human beings. The only part of Olishaw that caused me problems was the final boss, which requires a little bit more precision in the use of the harpoon than any of the other sections of the game, and that can be more difficult than expected. I ended up missing lots of opportunities to damage the boss in his stumble state because of these mistimed opportunities. Some of that was likely user error, but it was annoying to hit such a large upturn in difficulty right at the end of the game. There was also another boss on the zombie island portion of the game who can unexpectedly just kick you straight off the side of a tower and kill you in one hit. So I think he took me two or three times before I figured out how to dodge his attacks and then it all came pretty easy. All in all though, not too difficult. And not too long either. I think I ended up finishing the game in about five hours total, and that was with me searching pretty extensively throughout all the levels, even though the collectibles don't really do anything as far as I can tell. Trying to craft all the hats and the upgrades in Oak Tide and all that extra shit. I think that stuff was nice, but nothing groundbreaking or life changing about it. When I first fired up the game, my initial thought was that it looked like toilet water. The graphics are painfully simple, but as the game progressed, I realized that there was a lot of beauty in the simple art style of the game, and I think that comes more from the backgrounds in the game than the direct graphics of your player character. Those are beautiful and add to the broken down themes of the entire game. It's a classic case of don't judge a book by its cover, because as soon as I got further in the game, I realized all the positives within the design and the aesthetic of the game that I liked beyond it just looking simplistic. I think Olaja is another in the long line of really solid indie games that you can play on Game Pass. I would never actually have chosen to play these games if not for them being offered on the service, but I've enjoyed almost all of them. Narita Boy, Death Store, Katana Zero, Carrion, Neon Abyss are all really fun games that are worth your time to try out. Olaja is definitely head and shoulders above many other games that I've played recently, and I think you should definitely try it out. Even more indie games are coming out now as well, so I plan on continuing to play these. Really, the only AAA game that I even touch anymore is Halo Infinite, and that's probably due to nostalgia more than anything else. Most of the other games that come out aren't even worth the time to look at. Luckily, there are many other options for people like me who've grown tired of the big budget gaming, and Olaja is one of those options. Check it out. Bye.